Hi and welcome, Harvey Olivial, Carrington Clinical uh, Instructor, Carrington College Clinical Instructor. I got the respiratory guy on videotape, Mr. Houston. Greetings everyone. We are going to do our competency for endotracheal suctioning. So like anything else, you want to check orders, make sure you have an order for it. Alright, when you come in, you want to make sure you put your proper PPE in on and for demonstration I'm not going to put gloves and all that stuff on but I would if we were doing it for real so I'm just going to have uh, everything set up and ready so you want to make sure you have your suction kit I've already opened them up so that I can show you what we have we should have sterile gloves we should have a suction catheter and there's different sizes this one happens to be a 14 French catheter and you should have a basin so the basin just unfolds and you push the bottom to uh, set it up and now you have a basin where you can clean your suction catheter and also put um, saline in there. Um, also you would have some uh, water-based lubricant. I have a trap just in case we needed to get a sample when we suction. I have saline bullets and then I have a ET tube suction ballard which we'll go over uh, when I'm ready to demonstrate that. So you also need to have your suction set up and ready. Uh, typically it's negative 180, I mean negative 80 to 120, but sometimes you may need to go higher and different textbooks may give you different numbers. I have a portable suction here in the hospital. We would have one on the wall. I have my Ambu bag ready with my uh, mask attached. And then for this, I'm going to assemble everything and get ready to do um, the procedure. So I'm going to go ahead and put these on. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate the sterile technique because I'm just going to put them on for videotape purposes. But you would grab this. You would have one hand that you would have your suction catheter in. And typically I like to, once I attach it, kind of wrap it around my hand so it stays under my control. When I attach it to this suction, the way that you um, go ahead and suction is by occluding this port here with your finger. So the patient would be on a ventilator or we would do our ambu bag. So you could hyper oxygenate the patient before you do the suctioning. So I would go ahead and get them up to like 100% on the monitor. Once I'm comfortable with that, if he's on the ventilator, the ventilator tends to have a button that you can push that gives the patient 100% oxygen for two minutes plus silences the alarms. So I'm going to go ahead and unwrap this, then I'm going to insert this into the tube. So this tube is kind of small, so my catheter doesn't go down as easy, but I'm just going to show you. So I would go down to I meet a gag reflex or I meet resistance, then you start suctioning on the way out. So once I start suctioning on the way out, I pull back, okay? give the patient time to catch a breath. If I had to give them more ventilation in between, I would do that. If they were on the ventilator, I would let them get some breaths. You can clean this by putting saline in here and then you would suction. Anything you suction out is gonna go through here into your canister here and you will visually see what type of secretions you have. Are they uh, green, are they yellow, are they white, are they click, are they thick, and the amount too, are they copious, are they a small amount, moderate amount, okay? After I've given the patient a little bit of time to get a breath or two in, I'm gonna pass again. So now I'm gonna go down again, okay, same technique, if you meet resistance, don't force it. And if you get a gag reflex, that's your indication that you can stop there. Go ahead and suction, and you suction on your way out. You never want to suction as you're going down. You want to suction on your way out. If we are finished with this, then you would clean up, discard your ballard or your suction catheter, uh, clean up your mess. Now for demonstration, I'm going to demonstrate with a suction ballard. So this is an ET tube suction ballard. It will say ET tube on it. If you get a tracheal one, it will say endotracheal or it will say trachostomy. And it will also be smaller as far as in length. So this one is 54 centimeters and the one that is for a trach is going to be shorter. So we're gonna open this up. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this, okay? This is the part that attaches to my suction. This is the part that attaches 
to my AT2. If you're ever not 100% sure of how to put it together, I've sometimes seen people put it together wrong, just remember that the Ballard's going to go through the ET tube. So that should help you know exactly which way it needs to go. So you wouldn't put this here. It only really has one spot to go. You can also attach your Ambu bag to this so that you can ventilate in between suctioning. So I can go ahead and give a few breaths, make sure my patient's doing well. Now I'm going to go ahead and pass my catheter. So typically the same thing, you're going to go down and you want to stop when you meet resistance or on the way out. Now this has a locking mechanism on it so you can turn it and it will let you go down or you can turn it and it will not let you go down. The importance of that is if the patient was to somehow land on this, it would push it in and it would continuously be suctioning and take a breath away from the patient. We wouldn't want that to happen. So you're gonna go ahead and suction on the way out. Make sure that you are um, securing the tube with your hand so that it's not pulling on the patient. Once you are done, the nice thing about this is you can leave it in line and it's still clean because it's got a sheath over it. So leave it hooked up to your suction, make sure you lock it. And that is all, clean up your mess, document what you have, and um, that is all, thank you.